Ladies and gentlemen, we come to your main event of the evening. Three, five, many rounds for the Bantamweight Championship. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, please welcome Yanis Germora. opponent fighting out of the red corner please welcome Daniel Ortigas
Ladies and gentlemen, we come to your main event of the evening. Three five minute rounds of action for the Spotter Fight Series by the way Championship. Brought to you in association with KNA Hair and Beauty. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Yannis Kamada! His opponent standing across the cage, fighting out of the red corner, representing real fighters. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Daniel Ortigas. Your referee in charge of the action, Dan Moverheady. Main event time here, Pro MMA, Spider Fight Series. Yanis Gamori versus Daniel Hortiguez. And Yanis fighting out of the blue corner and Daniel from the red. Daniel with the long black shorts. And Yanis with the tight black and green shorts. Look at the elusiveness here from Yanis. His ability just to target strikes and move out of range is going to prove difficult if Daniel can't close the distance and look for a takedown. Some power from Yanis so far. Oh, he caught him. He caught well, look knee. at that exchange. The knee on the way in and he goes straight to the mount here. Now he's in a bit of trouble. Well, Daniel doing a great job of using the strikes here to implement this position right here, that opened it right up, that flying knee. I mean, he was weathering the storm and it looked like he looked to be in a, in a bit of trouble with regards to the power. And he had to be very careful about getting him, but he did a great job of using the strikes to open up the grappling game. And now you have a world champion black belt on top of you. What do you do if you're Yanis? Well, you know, he's he's gonna have to be a little bit patient here. Um, you know, try and, try and uh, unhook the legs firstly whilst protecting from the strike. But he's, nice bridge, big nice bridge. I mean, he's so explosive, Yanis. And that was crazy, almost like he used the cage to kick and bridge out of that position. Now finds himself on top of Daniel throwing down these punches. But he's got to be careful about getting caught in a submission. We know that Daniel's speciality is the armbar. Looking for the omoplata here, though. Yeah, I mean, Yanis is so explosive. And Yanis, only 23 years old. 23 year, three years old and oh, nice spinning Capoeira style kick there. But yeah, he's six and one at, at that age. I mean, that's that's very impressive. Yanis now working on the outside. That distance is very important. He's using kind of long jabs, long kicks. He doesn't want to get too close to Daniel and allow him to get hold of him. Yeah, Daniel doesn't want to take too many of those leg kicks. I mean, they're really thundering home. Yeah, he's doing a great job of going low and then going high. He's kicking the leg initially and then went up to head. He's looking to try and catch Daniel off guard and land that KO strike. Nice timing. But you see, he's happy to stay standing. Oh, look at that. Fake Brown looking for that turning kick again. It just missed shy of the tempo. I believe that hit the, the neck area of Daniel. But Daniel's going to be very careful about eating one of those unorthodox strikes. This, uh, I mean... It looked, it looked like, um, excuse me, Daniel. It looked like Daniel was, was going to be the more explosive guy, but Yanis with his trip. And Yanis just, I can't get over how explosive he is. You know, his timing's impeccable. Like he just, he senses when something's going to happen, and he changes the direction of the fight. We're getting a time here. Time, time, time. Mm, looked like a finger in the eye. Oh, uh, okay. Could have been where Daniel was trying to get out of that position. And it often happens sometimes with these gloves. You know, there's no way around that. I wish there was, but the fingers are exposed to allow you to grapple in MMA. And sometimes they do go into the eyes, unfortunately. And it's against the rule set. And almost certainly it wasn't, it wasn't intentional. He's get, the referee's gonna give him a warning here. If he's gonna do it again, he's not gonna take that. So he's gotta 
He's got to make sure he cleans up his technique here, does Daniel? Yeah, I mean, the referee not happy at all with that. I mean, I wonder if... Yanis now getting attended to. It's difficult to gauge his decision here. He's still trying to blink the eye. He kind of, he's kind of accepting it here. He's come here to fight. He's not going to let that deter him. And we're going to get... This is smart play. I love to see this from the referees. I mean, Daniel's e exceptional. He's refereed in the, in the UFC. Um, and to start this fight again on the ground where Yanis had a dominant position is a perfect call. Yeah, I mean, fair's fair, you know. It, it, there's no way that should be s stood up from, you know, from, from the eye poke. Wouldn't be fair. Yanis looking for the body with the knees there, but Daniel using that opportunity to escape out that position. But he's got to get to his feet here or potentially close the distance between him. They see the way he tries to hook his legs on the inside of Yanis' legs, but he's worried about standing up from fear of eating those big shots, looking for the heel hook here in this position. Oh. Yanis is frantically nice. driving away. He's like a, like a, a coyote trapped oh. in a bear trap. That was beautiful. Wow. How explosive is this man? Amazing, amazing. I mean, that was such a good scramble. I mean, you could, you could see it. Daniel actually slid underneath to try and get the, uh, the leg position. He almost got it. You know, Yanis uh, sensing it just turned and just ran for the hills to get out of there. This is shaping up to be a crazy main, main event here. I mean, if you look at paper, you, you kind of lean towards more Daniel with regards to his grappling pedigree. But this is MMA. Strikes are involved. You know, you can spoil on your opponent. You can even help out your opponent. So Yanis taking full advantage of that. Nice elbow. And Daniel, another one. Working his ground and pound. Keeping himself nice and square inside the guard. And Daniel's done a great job of leaving his hands away from the face there. He, he almost nodded to the referee as if to say, yeah, you know, I, I took on board what you said. I don't want to win this fight or lose this fight outside the rule set. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make sure I clean up my act. Drop down for the footlock, but there's Yanis again. So aware of what's coming. He's able just to explode out of the position. Look for the overhand right here. He's trying to set that. Whoa, look at that leg kick. The striking technique on Yanis is something to be watched. Great combinations. Yanis has really tailored his... Oh, look at that beautiful hip toss straight to Mal. Nice. And there's the 10-second clapper. Daniel doesn't have much time to work from this position. He needs to posture up and rain down those punches and elbows from the top. Great match. Great match. Some, some real high-level grappling. I mean, high-level grappling from both of these guys. Yeah. But this week about Yanis's ability to almost nullify those techniques with just precision timing like daniel will come in for a takedown and he'll he'll just change the direction use his hips to land on top i mean that is that is hard to do against a high level black belt very hard to do you know he's just one of those guys that really understands his body and and, and his weight distribution and instinct as well you've got to know when to move you know when's the time to, to, should i be striking here should i be defending here should i be trying to change the position you know um he's got all of that Daniel again given the warning, this time to Yanis, no fingers outstretched, you can't point them towards your opponent, they've got to be up into the air, and still avoid the eye pokes as well. And touch of gloves here, big leg kick from Daniel, Yanis again working that distance, some beautiful footwork, keeps the hands nice and high as you'd, you kind of expect from a, a Muay Thai specialist. Yeah, yeah, he's a very high guard, I mean his leg kicks have been great so far, we'll see if he's, he's going to do some of those. He tried a few um, reverse turning kicks as well. So there he's chopping in. I love the way he chops that leg kick down. He really drives it into the muscle area. He's trying to take the spring and the movement out of Daniel's step. So he's not kind of as explosive with the takedowns or, or has mu as much power in his strikes. Yeah, he's working upstairs and downstairs. Nice kick from Daniel. Oh, a better return from Yanis. Now Daniel's kind of a bit more precise with his kicks, but he needs to start throwing combinations. At the moment, they're just trading kicks. You can't forget about their hands. Oh, 
great combination. Look at that, just shrugs him off, works the unhook, turns the corner, and throws his opponent to the side to gain that angle again to strike. And this is what I love about MMA. It's just, you never know what's gonna happen. Leather's flying, you know, there could be a jiu-jitsu black belt in there. I mean, you just never can count anybody out. No, definitely not, definitely not. And this is re really well matched. I mean, at this point, you know, is Daniel looking for the takedown again? Is he, is he timing it, you know? He doesn't want to take really many more of those leg kicks. So Daniel now on the outside. Looks like he's consolidating this information, working for the ample opportunity to land the strikes or work the takedown. And that was kind of like a fake almost, wasn't it? Just to see the reaction, he's gauging reaction. I think you've picked up on that perfectly there, Colin. He's yeah. looking for a reaction. He's looking for a way in to get the takedown. Yeah, you know, go high, fake high, and then go low. But he's, he's taking a lot of these shots. He's looking to check them now, but... Yeah, that's a beautiful check. And that's the answer, isn't it? If you're here, eating the heavy leg kicks, you've got to bring that shin up and check those kicks. Yanis looking... Oh, looking for the spinning elbow. Looks like he was showing the rear uppercut there. I'm really impressed with Daniel's ability to strike. He's, I mean, he's hanging there with some of the, the best of the best in the striking realm here. He's got a Muay Thai specialist in front of him. And he's not doing too bad. No, not at all. Not at all. Then he's faking that uppercut. Could be looking to set up another spinning technique. He's trying to draw Daniel in. Yeah, Yanis is, is kind of putting the hands in the face and then following it up with a strike. He has to watch his fingers, though. He can't keep uh, putting his fingers in the face or towards the face, shall I say. Big overhand right from Yanis looking to plant that on the chin of Daniel. Daniel's got to be careful about keeping those hands up in these exchanges. If he drops his hand, his chin's in danger. And Daniel's really trying to look for a way in, but as of yet, he hasn't really come up with an answer for that. He's working these leg kicks, and there's the takedown he needs. Oh, looking for the right hand, lands on the mark. Big right hand came in. Big knee there from Yanis, looking for the... Oi, I love the way he went straight to the, for the takedown, then went for the rear elbow, that was beautiful. Oh, very nice, very tight, very tight. Take a shot, give one back, straight away. That's such a smart play from Yanis. He understands that Daniel's dangerous on the ground, and he's forcing him to strike. He's saying, look, kick my leg, kick my leg. He's been kicking Daniel low, and he immediately went high after he thought, you know, look, this is trade kicks for kicks. He's, he's, He's constantly giving Daniel kind of a game of catch-up to play. He's forcing him into his will, he's forcing him into his own game plan. Such a smart play here by Yanis. Yeah, Yanis is, I mean, really getting inside the head, it looks like. Oh, nice jab cross. Yanis now, master of the distance, a master of the range. Take a centre oh. case, looking for the big overhand right-left hook combination. Just misses, though. Daniel needs to pull the trigger here. He needs to change levels, work combinations to disguise the takedown attempts. Yeah, Yanis now is just picking him off. You know, he's picking his shots. He's, he's, he's getting everything he's throwing. Those leg kicks are thunderous. That is going to hurt in the morning. A return fire. What, what an exciting fight. I mean, that was just exceptional to watch. I mean, this is, this is for the belt. This is for the Spa Fight Series belt. So. I mean, there's, there's a lot to play for in this fight. You've, you've got to be safe. And I think we're seeing that from Daniel. It, it, it might not necessarily be that he doesn't have an answer to get in. He's just very cautious. He doesn't want to get caught and, and, and get knocked out, you know? So that, and that's the experience oozing through. But I mean, Yanis just, his ability to dictate where this fight takes place is awesome. Yeah, I, I mean, I think, uh, I think that Daniel went from looking for the timing you know, um, to, for the takedown, to now not being able to get that shot because, I mean, the amount of damage he must have taken in his leg, it really slows you down and you're una unable to be as fast as you would be if you hadn't taken, like, you know, 10 heavy shots to your leg. So um, let's see if he can try and hit the takedown.
Touch of gloves here, and again. Now Daniel's more bouncy on his feet there. He's trying to gain the distance. He's trying to use fakes and feints and footwork to get this clinch. Now he's got what he wants. He needs to work the unhooks, double unhooks. And he's actually giving Yanis double unhooks, and Yanis gets the takedown. What a turn of events. But he's, ha he's happy to stand up. You know, he's doing the right thing. You know, all of this counts. The judges, you know, all of this counts for the judges. Up kicks here from Daniel. He's going to get a stand up, and this is almost certainly in the favour of Yanis. Big punch there from Yanis straight down the centre line. Yeah. There's not much head movement from Daniel, is there? Not at all. I mean, he's just. Yanis is just picking him off. Whatever he throws is connecting. Uh, I wonder if, if, if Daniel's getting a little bit frustrated now. I mean, what is certain, he just can't, he can't take the damage. He's, he's wearing it quite well on the upper body, but that leg, if he takes more punishment, that's going to really, that's going to really limit his movement. Yeah, I mean, let's talk about game face. I mean, he's taking a lot of heavy shots, Daniel. Yeah, you know, consummate pro. And there's that shot. But, you know, he, he doesn't look like he's in any pain, but I, I assure you, he must be feeling something in his leg because he's taking a lot. Daniel's got to set up those shots. He can't telegraph that shot from that far out. I mean, Yanis already knows it's going to come. He needs to disguise it with strikes. Nice Good catch, catch. kitchen. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. Timing again, you know. It's... Yanis is growing in confidence as he lands the lead uppercut. And you can just see with every strike, his confidence is getting higher and higher. And it enables him just to dictate the pace. Daniel needs to really protect his head. He's, he's, he's taking big shots to the head as well now. There's the shot again. Slightly telegraphed, but does a great job of turning into a single with that whizzer. And look at the power. He's got to be careful about the leg in this position, however. Nice. Daniel now landing on top. He's fallen into a triangle. How crazy would this be if Yanis submits Daniel? Yeah, Daniel did well there. I mean, that could have ended. That could have, that could have ended, you know, quite badly for him because as he stumbled forward, he went right into the triangle. It wasn't quite tight enough. Um, so this definitely favours Daniel on top now. Perhaps he's going to work a bit of ground and pound. Look at that leg. Can you see from the camera angle the left leg, the thigh, just the rear of the thigh? It's covered at the moment by Daniel's calf, but that is that is a, a funny colour. That was all due to those leg kicks from Yanis. Yeah, and all on the hamstring as well. Really, it really looks painful. And Daniel now working the body and the head, but is it going to be enough for the referee to be satisfied that he's doing enough? He needs to pass the guard in this position, try and posture up, break that grip on the top of his head, and rain down some heavy strikes. Yeah, not enough, not enough work from the referee there. Yeah, and that, I mean, that was, I mean, that's not in the favour of Daniel to be back on the feet here. He was where he wanted to be on the ground. And he just, oops, took a slip there. But, I mean, he almost gave that away. He didn't say active enough on the top position to stay there. Wow, nice flurry. Working low to high now. You can see like most of the weight there, as Daniel moves around, most of the weight is on his rear foot. That is because the front foot's so beat up, he can't put weight on it. And that's going to serve to keep him in the same place. You notice there, he's always with his back to the cage, then he circles out. But he almost keeps himself centered because he's got the, the weight on too much on the rear foot. And that's going to spell danger if Yanis can land that knockout shot. Yeah. I mean, Yanis straight in with the, the double unders. And then disengaging again. Oh, very, very, very big shots on the leg. Oh, front kick straight to the jaw from Yanis. You can see the confidence growing in Yanis. He just feels like he can throw anything. You know, a little bit of showboating now. Such an entertaining fight here at Sparta Fight Series. And he's brushing the kicks off, moving the hands, faking the legs. Done a real good job of confusing Daniel Ortigas here.
and show respect immediately after the fight. But Yanis believes he's done more than enough in that fight. Those brutal leg kicks and the pinpoint accuracy of his strikes. And he didn't give too much. He didn't kind of chase after the knockout and give Daniel the, the distance that he needed to initiate a clinch and a takedown. He was very patient, calm and collected. All the attributes of a high level fighter. Really impressive, really impressive. Um, we saw some great stuff there. there some, some really nice scrambles. Um, we saw some good jiu-jitsu. We saw some amazing striking. Um, yeah, re really good fight. Great main event. Such an entertaining and explosive main event here at Sparta Fight Series 2. But we'll have to go to the judges to render who goes home with that gold. Ladies and gentlemen, please show your appreciation for both warriors this evening. But ladies and gentlemen, at the end of three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards with a unanimous decision. Your winner and the new Sparta Fight Series Pantherweight Champion in the blue corner, Yane! And your appreciation for his opponent this evening. Please give it up for Daniel Rodriguez. And Daniel will go home with his experience. You never lose, you always learn. You know, and that this is. This has been what we've seen throughout MMA. You know, he's going to go back to the drawing board. He's going to adjust his game, work on the striking. You know, and it was it's such a beautiful fight to watch, as you see there with his young son. Very family-orientated man. And throughout this, this card, I mean, there has been so many questions that you could, have, you could have asked. And the only way to know is to have them answered in this cage. And they were, they were just that. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, we had we had all types of different fights tonight. You know, some boxing, some K1, and some MMA. And um, what, what I really liked about this show was the international flavor. I mean, almost every match had an international uh, vibe to it. People from different countries, from Europe and further abroad. Um, and it really makes for some interesting fights. Um, you know, they're doing a great job over here at Sparta Fight Series. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it one more time for your new uh, Sparta Fight Series featherweight champion, Yanis Gamora! Well, ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to the end of a fantastic evening here tonight in Eastbourne. We hope that you've enjoyed yourselves. We will be back here again real soon. So in the meantime, check out our Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram as well. Like all the pictures, share as much as you possibly can. A big thank you to all of the teams coming from all of their different countries this evening, joining us here in Eastbourne for a great night of mixed martial arts action. But on behalf of everyone in the back, on behalf of myself and everyone out the front, I've been your host, Jonathan Miller, the voice of the veil, mustache of ceremonies. Thank you, and have a safe journey. Good night.